Good morning, beautiful people of planet Earth. It's the 16th of September, 2024. Monday, Charlie. Monday. And the time is 10.21 a.m. And Charlie and I wish to welcome you to our sacred space at Titania's Realm here in Brisbane, Australia on this gorgeous spring day. A bit kind of coolish today, 20 degrees, but the sun is shining and there's not one solitary cloud. Oh, I found one over, over there in the southeast, but <clears throat> there's not one solitary cloud in the sky if I only look directly ahead and to the right. <laughs> So there is that. I must, I must stick to the facts, people. We found one. We found one cloud. <clears throat> anyway, gorgeous day. And um, I've had a shower and washed my hair, which is in the process of air drying as we speak because I've got very fine hair, so I have to air dry it. And um, it's a pain in the ass, but it is what it is. And what else can I tell you? I woke up extremely early this morning, which is starting to really freak me the fuck out. I'm not actually a morning person, I'm a night owl. Your mother's a night owl, isn't she? You go to bed at sunset and mama stays up sometimes till 2am and it all gets a little bit cray cray. But now she can't do that because she wakes up between 6 and 7.30 or 8am, which is normal time frames for most other humans, am I right? But um, <clears throat> it's it's probably good. It, it's probably good for me, and it's probably a um, a kind of a knock-on effect from the CPAP device. But um, I, you know, I still kind of always feel subterraneanly kind of tired. But I guess I guess there's been a slight improvement, and. Uh, I had a very bad night after the, the, the intense dance on Friday, though. The next, that morning coming home was a bit tickety-boo with my bladder really overreacted. But then I realised I hadn't felt the need to go to the loo for the three hours that I was in the club, which is unusual, because I usually have to go at least twice. So I think, let's not get too excited, people of Earth, but I think maybe, possibly... My bladder's improving, which is what the whole point of forcing me to be tortured with CPAP was about. Anyway, we'll see. It's probably too early to tell yet because I, I, <clears throat> I improve and then I slip back and then I improve and then I slip back. And sometimes when I slip back, it's quite a big fucking slip into the abyss and it takes me a while to come back from it. So... I don't dare get too excited, but my, my psych will be just absolutely thrilled to hear that I think I'm improving. Because even thinking that there's an improvement means it's a positive shift in the right direction. Am I right? <clears throat> this living as um, powerful spirits trapped in short fat hobbit bodies is a bit it's a bit fucking intense sometimes it'd be all right if you weren't reliant on you know your internal plumbing sy system to work appropriately and if you didn't have um you know if you didn't thirst and you didn't hunger but i guess they want to do that to us don't they turn us into cyborgs and part machines so i guess I guess I shouldn't complain too much because this is my body and it has a wonderful other mechanisms that go along with the thirst and the hunger and, you know, the plumbing, like desire and excitement and trepidation and poetry and literature and music and art and the occasional, you know, romantic kind of fantasies that just keep life Keep life a little bit more interesting than merely being a, a shitting, pissing, gigantic mass of waste production, you know. <sighs> yes, one has to have, one has to have the yin and the yang, although I'm not quite sure that, that all, all, the, all the Taoists and all, all the Chinese herbalists will be laughing right now about me. <laughs> 
transposing the shitting and the pissing against the more positive attributes of being a, a holistic, integrated human with emotions and thoughts and magic and desires and oh oh well it's much nicer than the other topic i went to segue on it's because of charlie every time i have charlie all i can think of is yeah because you know she's already done it haven't you a massive one a massive one as my cleaning lady rati says well she's alive can i have a kiss kissy kissy you went to give me a kiss and then you changed your mind. You're a very fickle lover, aren't you, Charlie? She says, I'm not your lover, Mama. I think in your little crazy little birdie brain you, you are because when the wild birds come, you reject them all as if they were not your own species, as if they were, you know, wanting to do very, very rude things to you indeed. And they do because they're rainbow lorikeets. But you don't know this because you got thrown out of, kicked out of your nest when you were a baby bird. So you didn't grow up with them and learn their ways. Their polyamorous, clownish kind of debauched ways. No, I know. Some birdies, oh, don't you bite his mama. Some birdies, Charlie, mate for life. Like penguins. Did you know that? That penguins? have one mate for life and are very devoted and look after each other and they even kind of hold each other with their wings somehow I'm not sure how they do that since they don't have hands but anyway I read it somewhere they hold they hold each other in the Antarctic streams and keep themselves together that's true love Charlie when you hold each other up in freezing Antarctic streams and turgid waters and storms and all sorts of horrific events humans should try that shouldn't they they should try holding each other up a bit more there'd be less nonsense and wars and famines and genocidal bioengineered weapons and all sorts of other bullshit if we would just you know support each other and be kind recognize that we're all different but we're also kind of all the same Yes, yes, she says, don't tell me, Mama. I reject all my own species out of hand every time I see them. Well, I probably would if I got kicked out of the nest as a baby bird. Had to be raised by various strange women. I'd be a bit pissed off too. <coughs> yes, I know. All right, are we ready to do our readings, Charlie? Let's see what Mama T wrote down on today's even date through the years. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's mediocre, sometimes it's hilarious. I haven't done a preview, so I don't know what I'm going to slam this all with, so we'll just have to, as I often do in life, people of Earth, because I'm a daughter of the gods and a shaman, we just have to go with the flow and ride the sine cosine wave of the cosmos and try not to drown am i right try not to drown sometimes sometimes we're surfing an almighty enormous wave and it's powerful and blissful and awesome and oh i love it when that happens i haven't i don't actually surf by the way i'm just using analogies of how life should be slip sliding on top of a rip curling wave just sailing in to stable land in the field no disturbances no ugliness no drowning i have actually drowned a couple of times as a child or came very close to it anyway very very fucking close so very close it was peaceful anyway my tea's already going cold, what the hell? And you just made it. All right, <clears throat> let us go. Let us begin. Let us begin where all things begin, Charlie, at the beginning.
The title of today's reading, 16th of September 2024, is... kind of have to laugh at myself. The gods are calling. We dream a new paradigm together. One day at a time. Or in my case, sometimes one breath at a time, depending on how unwell I am and, and any you know, at any point in time in the space-time continuum. So on we go. On we go. <clears throat> oh, another happy news. My friend Belinda, who I, um, who I befriended, I met her when I first went to her West End drumming circle back in 2009, just after my gallbladder surgery so been friends for that long she actually invited me to come on friday morning bring my spinning wheel that i bought rather impulsively i might add <laughs> at um reverse garbage and she um she invited me to bring it along and she'll help me set it up and get it going if it unless it needs any specific parts which i, I don't think it does i think it's okay I'm not sure. But anyway, she's going to have a look at it with me and we'll sort out what it needs. And if I need to buy parts, I'll buy the parts. But if it's okay, she'll teach me how to spin on it. Isn't that wonderful? It's very, very... Thank you, Belinda. It's very, very kind and generous of you. Because um, I, I really need to get all that fleece that I worked on for, you know... Uh, well, Bobo was still alive when I was working on it. I think about two years ago two or three years ago. I need to do something with it instead of it being all stockpiled and lying under my bed in a big bag. It's, it's clutter. It needs to be turned into, you know, wool, into, um, you know, spun into thread. And then I'll, I can transmute it into weavings or knit it up or something. Then it won't be quite so much clutter because it'll be woven. Well, that's the plan anyway, people of Earth. Mama T's always got to keep herself busy and use use the um the gifts from the multiverses. A lot of that fleece was gifted to me by my friends Lynn and Danny Sloan, so I need to um I need to transmute it. And it'll be fun to learn how to do it too. Now my stupid laptop's doing weird flip blue flashing screen things and flashing me and I'll just, that didn't work this morning when I tried that, but we'll try it again. No, fl flickering and flashing, and it's going to give me an epileptic fit. If I had epilepsy, it would give me a fit, but I'll just have to tune it out. Charlie, what did you do to upset the computer? She wasn't me, Mama T. I didn't do anything. I know, but I always like to blame my kids. Not really. Sometimes my kids got the blame for things that weren't fair though. Like sometimes I'd like be missing money because they always denied that part, don't they? Or I'd be missing, you know, stupid things like losing my glasses. So anyway, we won't blame the bird for the computer because she doesn't have the technology know how to interfere with my computer. It's just, it's just the computer, Charlie. Ugh, growl. My wolf is growling. Ugh. Anyway, here we go. We'll carry on reading. Mama T and Beauregard are back in bed, safer that way. Yes, yeah, some days you just, it's wise to just not, just be absent from the world. Absent yourself and Stay the fuck in bed and keep away from other humans. Um, let me try and do it. We're both pulling funny faces, my dog and I, because that's what we used to do. Pull funny faces sometimes. So there's me doing some weird pouty face. And there's Beauregard doing a weird snouty face. And together, we look quite cute, I thought. I miss him and his cuteness. He was adorable. Yes, we decided that day to stay in bed. Best day's work 
is lying in bed, avoiding everything and getting well if you're not well or if you're just mentally feeling a bit shot to pieces. When in doubt, sleep it out, babies. Right. <coughs> 16th of September 2023. What am I saying there? What am I waffling on about there? I've got to scroll down. Ah, right. I was referencing. It's going to be hard to see because of the blue flashing screen thingy. But I was referencing this image in my bottom of my mug. That when it's not flashing blue kind of looks like the map of australia or two heads a man's head that looks suspiciously like my ex-husband actually even got the big nose and the moustache and what kind of looks like my mother <laughs> both of them giving each other what in the maori culture is called a hongi when you press your foreheads together as a mark of deep affection and honor and high regard and usually the nose and the forehead get pressed together, which they are indeed doing that. A full-on Māori hongi. Well, haha, -ha, there you go. So I wrote, <clears throat> a tet, a tet, a map of Australia minus Cape York. Two people gifting each other a hongi or an argument, because they're like headbutting almost. It's day one of the Jewish New Year, which the first two days are the, the holy, holy days of the New Year. The face on the left kind of looks like my ex-husband when he was young and still had hair. Lol. Ugh, go away, vermin. <laughs> I have to laugh. It's like being haunted. The man's the living person. I have nothing to do with him. I haven't spoken to him since... Oh, I don't know. I can't remember the last time. It's, it's got to be at least 20 years. Been, we separated and, you know, almost 30 years ago. I literally have not had a word to him. And yet he wants me in my fucking tea leaves. Like, can you believe it? How rude is that? I'm sure it's not his fault, though. It's probably the daemon attached to him. Or worse, it's my mother, am I right? That, that face looks suspiciously like my mother, too. The one on the right. The Jesus. They can get to me anytime they like, those ghoulies, and they know they can because I'm a shaman. So what do I do? Fuck off back into the light. Or your original source. Just get away from me. But it's kind of hilarious. I mean, I can laugh about it now, but it used to really freak me out, people of Earth. Ha ha, looking at the image again, the face on the right almost looks like my dead evil mother, Gisela. Well, that says everything. He always colluded with her against me. How funny. Oh, let's look at it again for good measure because it's, it's, it's even a year ago, but it's still equally fucking bizarre. How am I going to get rid of the flashing bit? It really does look like her and my mother. She's even got what looks like a lacy kind of collar, which she used to have nice blouses. And it's definitely my mother because it's like even side on. The only thing is the nose is not quite clear, but my mother had a very large nose. But the hair, the, the bad perm and her... <laughs> it's even got his bottom lip. Oh, look, I'm triggered now. I'm triggered. I'm triggered. It's a year later and I'm triggered by that. My God. I'll, I'll, just, I'll have to smoke a cigar, won't I? Or take a Valium. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do either of those things. I had to smoke a cigar early Saturday morning, though, because I got weirded out by some creep that was kind of waiting for me out, out, out the um, outside the club. Yuck. Really yucky. But anyway, no harm, no foul. I walked with Ness to her car and I just carried on walking. And there was no incident, thank God. It's, I'm sick of having to live like as a woman, kind of always just hyper vigilant and just that little bit on the edge of anarchy and chaos, having to fight for your life potentially. It's 
not a nice way to exist but this is the downfalls of dancing wildly out in the night is you're going to attract idiots and some of them are dangerous idiots and you just don't really know. Some of us marry dangerous idiots and have children with them and they collude with your own mother against you. That's how fucking ignoble and dangerous they were and no doubt still are. Oh, by the gods. Anyway, he hasn't hassled or bothered me. He wouldn't fucking dare, mind you, because I'm on my last infamous last nerve with that one. But um, he hasn't bothered hasn't bothered me in many years now. The last news I got of him was uh, I, my daughter cut ties to me in September last year. Oh, isn't that interesting? Because it was just after that that image in the cup of my ex-husband and my mother fighting or giving each other a hongi or whatever the fuck. They should just go and get a room, shouldn't they? Really was a bit and kind of incestuous. But anyway, um, <clears throat> the last message I got about her father via my daughter, which would have been earlier that year, 2023, very early in the year, or might have been the year before actually, I can't actually remember, was she had the chutzpah to come to me and said, oh, Dad, Dad told me that, um, you know, he had a really good life when he was married to you and he kind of has regrets. Don't ever fucking tell me that after the damage he wreaked in my life and my children's life, by the way. I said, I don't want to hear that shit. I said, of course, he had a good life when he was me. He had an excellent life when he was with me, but he didn't appreciate me at all and was highly abusive. I said, so tell him to fuck off. And when you get to the gate that says fuck off, climb over the gate, keep running as far as you can get over the hill and up the mountain to another gate that says we told you to fuck off and keep fucking off forever. She's like, oh, but mum, I just thought, you know, that would make you happy to know that, that he has regrets. No, I have no regrets. Je ne regrette rien. And it's kind of rude to do that. Like really rude and disrespectful to shove that in my face after all these many decades. I don't want any relationship with that man ever again, not even as reconciling as friends perhaps mm -mm. <coughs> takes a lot to kill my love it took several strangulations over the years for various men to kill my they literally tried to kill me to get me to stop loving or to stop existing at all so but when I'm done when I'm done I'm done so <clears throat> anyway i just thought that was a really bizarre and then i have this image turn up on my cup on today's date a year ago so what does it mean nothing it's just odd doesn't really mean anything in the broad scheme of things but odd but I thought, there you go my mother's spirit riding on both of them trying to get to me, push my buttons. The woman's been dead for 14 and a half, yes, and a half fucking years. It's disturbing. Wow. Anyway, here I write. <coughs> I'm trying to figure out why my ex-husband, who is still living, is haunting me in recent months, appearing in dreams, irritating, and now in my cup of tea residue. I desire no contact with that foul man ever again. It's extremely odd that he is manifesting in this way. A long dead relationship. Perhaps it's symbolic of finally shucking off that past association, except that we are forever bound via our two daughters. I think Crystal said he thought he was dying. So there was that. He's probably having like all these like petty more and <laughs> which is an orgasm, people. Um, and um, 
it's funny how I came out with that. That that just happened quite unconsciously. Please forgive me. But it, yeah, as I said, it's funny how he's having his little petty mores and his little regrets and his little life reviews. And suddenly, Mama T wasn't quite so bad after all. No, we had a thriving business and a lovely home. And we had a, you know, in those days, I was held in reasonably high regard in certain quarters of my Jewish community. And we were very respectable. We had nice friends. Well... I had nice friends. He had creepy as fuck, treacherous, awful friends, but there is that. We had a swimming pool, we had two company cars. You know, we were living a reasonably aesthetically pleasing, interesting enough. Well, it wasn't interesting, it was bored as fuck because the man had no intellect and no cooth. But apart from that, we had, you know, we were living we were living a very nice suburban dream. Anyway, I guess time will tell. It's probably time I shucked off the Aaron's name too. I have to roll my eyes at that one. I've still kept it, but I actually keep it more in honour of his father, who was good to me and paid off two houses so that we could have children and have a nice life. That was not anything to do with my ex-husband, but his father's influence. His father was a decent, honouring man. Should be more men like Harry Aarons. Although, if you ask my mother in law, she thought he was a bit of a bastard, so maybe I idealised this man. Maybe he was a bastard to her. I don't know, I wasn't there. I tend to believe women, though, when they say these things. But however, Harry Aarons was very good to me, very good and respectful and kind to me. And uh, so I carry his name for that reason and that reason only. And um, I didn't want to go back to my Philip's name because I don't have a very high opinion of my father and the way I was raised and how I was treated. So why would I resume that name, right? Um, I sometimes think about changing my name to something completely out of left field, but then I chicken out because this has been my name for since I was 19. 40 years I've carried this name. Hasn't brought me any luck, but um, it's complicated, people. My loyalty to certain things is astonishing. So yes, maybe I should change my name. Call myself Tanya Desiree Starlight motherfucker destroyer or something weird because <laughs> I don't want to I know I don't really want a hippie name and I don't really want a gothic name either what can I call myself just just the Tanya it works for me most of the time removed from myself into my third person persona because it's hard work being Tanya Desiree Aaron's my mind always churning things over. Anyway, yes, here I write. It's been my identity since I was 19 and one month old. Indeed. One month and eight days old, actually. Far the fuck out. I can't believe I did that. No one, no one said, are you sure that's actually no, I tell a lie. One acquaintance of my ex-husband, the wife, took me aside and said, are you sure you want to marry, get married so young, Tanya? What do your parents say? Oh, my parents have no say. I run my own bus, I said. Oh, I was so cocksure and certain of myself. I was looking for escape, darlings. I think that young woman who was older than me in her 30s, I think she could see. She just took one look at him and went, are you sure that this is a good idea? Oh dear goddess. I wish more of my my actual own friends and family had sat me down and said, don't marry someone out of loyalty, seeking respectability because you feel guilty about the fuckery. Don't do it. Just get a backpack and go travelling and never come back. That would have been... 
very good advice, people of Earth. I could cry when I think about it. But then if I'd done that, I might never have had my children, so. But now knowing what I know about how my children feel about me, I could go and sit in the corner and cry. So, I wasted my life on feckin' idiots. Well, at least I didn't do that again. Didn't marry again, I mean. I still waste my life on other idiots, so. I'm not marrying ever again. I have no intention of it. <coughs> it's dangerous. It's a danger thing for me to do that. It's a trap. It's a hell loop. It's a, it's 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 kind of an enslavement. You know, it's it's terrifying. The, the prospect of it makes my blood run cold in my veins. That's how bad marriage was for me. Never again. Never again. Learn from my mistakes. What I didn't know as a young girl, I know now. I know. I fucking know. But here I write, the times are a changing, I need to embrace my new reality. What new reality? Nothing changes, if nothing changes, babies. Anyway, <clears throat> that tea is really not agreeing with me, it's repeating on me, I, ugh, I feel tasted foul. And, <sighs> Charlie's looking at me like What's going on, Mama T? What's going on, Mama T? Can't see her. She's muted down. What you doing? Are you snuggling between me and the printer? Why are you doing that? Is that comfortable for you, Charlie? Are you very comfortable, Charlie? Are you okay, Charlie? I love you, Charlie. You is an awesome bird, Charlie. She was right to reject all her species too. Sometimes the only way to survive is to just stay away from them all. Oh, I'm getting nibbles now. Mama's going to learn how to spin wool on Friday if the, if the spinning wheel can be set up and work and works. We're going to spin lots of wool, Charlie. You can help us. Like Beauregard used to help Mama, ripping it with his teeth, helping me card it. You can help by, what would she do? What can she do? She'd shit in it, wouldn't she? I've changed my mind about that, Charlie. But you can observe Mama spinning the fleece just like Penelope in the Odyssey. Waiting for my suitors to come that are suitable and not weirdos and dead shits and unavailable but gorgeous men. Mine has to roll one's eyes. Oh, bless. But love is love. I can love my gorgeous unavailable men till the day I die. I just can't have them and I have to come to terms with that. But anyway, I go around like this in a cycle every now and then. It grinds my gears and other times I'm like, I'm so happy. It's really weird and nuts. But you know what? It keeps, you know why I do this, don't you? It keeps me safe from marriage with someone that might not be suitable at all and might be actually destructive and might actually kill me. So there's a method in my madness. Unfortunately, it's costing me dear. It's preventing me from having wonderful, healthy, constructive, protective, nurturing, noble, loyal, faithful, loving partnerships because my level of trust and giving a fuck is way, 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 way high and um, <clears throat> I'm going to be alone until the day I die and you know what, it's not so bad really, it's not. So ignore my little Mickey fins and my little tantrums and my little, you know, splonging in the shadow lands and squealing and freewheeling into the abyss because when I come up for air I'm quite sanguine again and realistic and I'm like yeah that was never going to be any good anyway so it's all good babies 
my beautiful friend Brecky Tit wrote, Venus was retrograde the last few months, and I can absolutely see them, moustache and all. And I replied, good. I started to wonder if I'm going crazy, lol, which is a very big fear of mine is going crazy. So I was told my whole life as a child, you're crazy and you're stupid. You know, this is how toxic my family were. Well, they were wrong about that. I was never, I was traumatised, but I was never crazy. Oh, would you believe it? My feckin' laptop just died. Oh, nothing works in psychedelic dreamers' world, does it? She's off with the pixies. Here we go. There will be miracles when you believe, when you believe. Just have to manifest miracles, babies. Manifest the miracles. What do you say, Charlie? She says, Mummy, Mummy, I wouldn't like having a daddy anyway. They would take time away from me. They would be annoying. They would boss me around. They would make me be a better bird. And I have no intentions of being a better birdie, mummy. I like the way I am, just fine. Projection. Ah, oh, we're lucky. It it died, but it didn't lose the page. <sighs> Big sigh of relief there. All right, we can continue on then. We can continue on being awesome, but also a little bit weird. <clears throat> Here's that ring I was trying to show you yesterday. And um, I had sold it a little love heart that I cut out of an antique, very dinged up cigarette case onto it. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I should go and put it on. It was in my stock that I was trying to sell, but nothing sold. So. I should wear all my pieces in good health and triumph and delight. Yes, I shall indeed. Right. Charlie. Charlie. And here, oh. I didn't realise it was one of photos. I also soldered on little hearts on the sides of it. So, oh, there'll be one more photo. The other one kind of melted on a bit too much, but it still looks okay. And there's me thinking about making more, which I didn't, because although I did the patterning on it, I thought the backing was very too thin, not strong enough to be on a ring, so I changed my mind on that. <coughs> So yes, thinking about making a casting, casting a ring today. I thought about doing it yesterday actually. And then what happened? I got busy with videos and I got distracted with other things. My hair's going all buffy. Well at least it's washed and it's clean. It's half the battle. Buffy, buffy weird hair. Right. 10.02 p.m. I just finished my heart ring, my memorial for Beauregard. I only made about three fucking memorial rings for Beauregard. Obsessed much? Yes, I know. Well, it was dark days and I was having to distract myself. It got a bit banged up. Bits melted in the band. What the fuck, arg. I will never be a successful jeweller at this rate. But I will... Liver of sulphur, it, and wear it with joy and pride. It's taken me all afternoon and evening. I ran out of solder, so that was right down to the last pallium too. By goddess, that was annoying. Not pallium, pallion. What are you doing, Tanya? Making up new words. Sometimes I do that. problem it's a problem a Rosh Hashanah miracle that I just enough solder on the last embellishment 
have a heart, O Holy One. When you took my dog, you took too much. Yes, he did. Still very upset about that. I hope you are loving and protecting the souls of Bella Rosa, Jeffy, Zulu, Tristan, Mushu, Penny, Sophie, Sox and Beauregard and the goldfish that died the other day. And let us not forget all the, the, the chickens. <sighs> so much grief I've endured in the last 10, 11 years. It's, it's probably why I'm a bit nuts now. It's just been too much. Just want peace and contentment and true authentic loves and my pets to live long and healthy lives and myself to live a long and healthy life and prosperity and joy and peace and love and good health. I think I said all of that and repeating myself. Oh dear goddess. All the pets that crossed the rainbow bridge before them over the decades that I've been loved by non-humans. Non-humans, Charlie. You could have let me have a real love with a decent, loving, honourable, kind human man too. But alas, no. Shit happens. At least I will be surrounded by love when I eventually cross over. That's something to look forward to. Indeed it is. It's probably the only fucking thing left that I've got to look forward to. No, my luck. Some dark demon posing as God will cast me down to hell and send me into eons of even more isolation and marginalisation and sadness and despair and loneliness. I hope not. That would be awful. I hope not, but you know. It's been a bit of a living hell this life, so you just never know what you're going to get, do you? Life is like a box of chocolates. It's not funny. I shouldn't laugh. It's not actually fucking funny. <laughs> but never mind. These are dark. These are dark memoirs today. I can't help myself. Anyway, I had a lovely morning, and you know, I'm being shown such sweetness and kindness with Belinda helping me get getting on with my spinning wool journey. And um, <clears throat> I heard from another friend who I've been worried about that's been unwell. So I'm, you know, I'm happy to hear everything's back back in equilibrium again. Makes me very happy to hear that, my beloved ones. All right, 16th of September, 2022. 1.01 p.m. and just now, 1.01 a.m. Those magical metaphysical age angels are up to something. Or at least ensuring they have my full attention. I interrupted my transcribing to vocal media to post this, so they know I am aware and of service and riding their kaleidoscopic rainbow wave to nowhere and everywhere. Blessed as usual, oh sorry, blessed as usual by the gods while sipping tea in my sacred space garden. And listening to the twittering of my beautiful Charlie girl as she climbs up and down the frangipani tree, having already pooped on my nice clean blouse. She aims deliberately, I'm, I'm sure of it. Perfect bloody aim, that bird. Anyway. What's up? She just called out. Why, my darling, everything is up. And we are flowing into paradise on golden wings that support us in our physical mortality and in our <clears throat> spirit dancing and dreaming also. Pretty much. I have every faith in that and my angels. Sometimes they freak me out though when they send me messages like, my mother and my ex-husband appearing in my cup. It's not nice to freak out the Tanya. I'm very emotional. It can take me days to recover. 
We need not fear the enmity or hatred or envy of other mortals, disguising their ultra altruism in fetid, falsely sanitised, white-coated ways. Because we have survived much and even thrived at times, but always, always, we are held precious by the gods, the god within and the externalised manifestations without. Expect only good and work towards the highest good and be surprised and delighted by the reflected glory and radiance that good will shine back to us. Two years ago I wrote this, mind you. It's been a bit of a rough two years since then. When losing Beauregard like, nearly fucking killed me, actually, to be honest. It was a bit touch and go. <coughs> anyway. For we have... <clears throat> For we have lived in the shadow lands and destruction and the torture and the death cults long enough to know everything has its season and that time must see to the equilibrium and the rectifications and righteous honorific wonders that surround us if we only take off the blindfolds clasped, clasped to our faces by callow cowards and truly see. Sometimes you have to see without physical eyes. You have to use your pineal gland, what's left of our pineal glands after being calcified by toxins for fucking decades. But see with, with your inner eye, your intuition, your insight, your gnosis, your spiritual gifts, my darling ones. Sometimes it's good to be blind in weird ways because you have to use all your other senses. <clears throat> not that I choose to be blind and I'm certainly not mocking and deriding blind people. I would never do that, but... What I mean by that, I've had friends who were blind and they said your other senses become very heightened and your intuition is really intense and, you know. <clears throat> so we, we, all have our <clears throat> we all have our disabilities that sometimes become, in very odd ways, kind of blessings like my complex PTSD. Finally fucking honed, wetted wetted um, kind of uh, craft that it is. But it has its drawbacks too, you know, constant fatigue, constant hypervigilance, constant being on the flash point of having to go into battle mode at any given time because you never, ever, ever truly feel safe. It's not, not a nice way to live out a life, people of Earth. But it's not my fault. It was gifted to me by monsters. So, you know, <clears throat> I try to use it in a way, work with it to protect others around me and my own stupid self. But um, it's a powerful gift when you know how to um, harness it and use it wisely. Just saying. I'm whistling up a new paradigm for all life forms of integrity, honour and safety and a deep love and connection to our earth. It's what we all need to, to do and be. Live in, pardon me, live in connection with our earth as human flesh suits with amazing divine spirits embedded into us live in harmonic resonance with all that is was and ever shall be in our physical forms 
in, pre in preparation for the world to come that we enter into eventually at our appointed times, all of us. Live well, live joyously, live beautifully, live powerfully, live with honour and deep, deep regard for all life. And uh, life will be kind, kinder to you or if not kinder, it'll make a lot more sense. You, you won't struggle quite as hard when you have your feet firmly planted on the ground and uh, you know <clears throat> you know who you are and you know your path. You won't struggle. There will be less struggling, less depressions, oppressions, suppressions. You'll attract better people into your life too. When you live with honour and integrity, everyone around you has to, you know, resonate with that. Otherwise, they're not a good fit and they get sloughed off. It's just how it is, people of Earth. So find your vibe, find your tribe. Be an example for others to follow, if nothing else. And um, try to have compassion for those that are so ignorant and, and naive and sometimes downright stupid that they have no idea what it is you're putting down for them. They'll wake up to it one day, but it might be too late by then or might take them several more incarnations. Who knows? I know myself, I'm not perfect and I've got a lot. There's a lot the the gods still making me, you know, jump through hoops and <clears throat> prove my mettle and teaching me lots of new skills in the last four years, well, really five years since the near death and 25th of June 2019 where they actually told me they were casting me back to earth and that I would have to tie up loose ends and, you know, they said we're sending you back to a hellscape of epic proportions, but you'll have to learn new skills along the way and develop your soul a bit more and so it has been done. They could have gifted me eternal sunshine of a spotless mind and eternal rest and peace, but no, they vomited me back to earth and made me jump through quite a few hoops. Meanies. I say that smiling because it's for my highest good. I'm not... I'm not God and I'm not in charge of the universe. I just have to ride that tsunami wave. <coughs> With perfect faith that my angels and my ancestors that love me and the elementals and the fae and, you know, the spirits that love me won't let me drown. Every time I think I'm going downhill, they pluck me back up. might take a few weeks, days, weeks, sometimes months, but they always lift me back up on my feet. And it's, quite frankly, a tad astonishing. It's a tad astonishing what I have survived in this lifetime. And this exact body, well... It was younger then. It used to be younger and smaller. <laughs> you have to laugh. <clears throat> Connection to our earth, the birthplace of our human bodies and the place where we will leave our corporeal forms to fly into eternity. But we are seated here. We are of the earth. We were never meant to colonise Mars or other planets, to betray our only home and the most sacred of space. This is my opinion, people. You don't have to agree with me. I'm just saying. This is our soul signature, our power, mana, mojo. Protect our earth and each other, those who still value life and our 
God-given human bodies. Read between the lines what I'm putting down here, babies. The old gods are arising and calling upon us to remember who we are before it's too late. To stay human no matter what, even if it means, as is the natural order of things, that we must decline and decay and recycle our souls yet again. Living with joy in our hearts to the songs of the birds and the music of the spheres, knowing we can trust our own souls to guide us in the right path to freedom, to sanity, to healing. Love is the law. Love yourself enough to say no to ignoble monstrosities and arise and shine in your own God-given divinity and love. Love for its own sake, all the broken parts that make up you, kintsugi'd spiritual gold and glittery fascination and hold each other precious, your beloveds, for they are you in reflection and refraction. Day six of mulling tea to clear my lungs. <clears throat> Actually, I think I might need a cup of that today. I feel kind of congested and icky, you know, upper respiratory. Hope I'm not getting sick again because I'm only just recovering from that last weird lurgy. Anyway, I had a rough night last night. Up all night peeing like a racehorse. Oh, dear goddess. I had, a, had to take Ventolin as my lungs felt tight, but on I go, this too shall pass. I had a phone call last evening about 5am from my former GP, haranguing me about rejecting any further colonoscopies, because all they care about is money, money, money. Put your body through hell so they can have the latest Lexus, am I right? I told her I would rather die of bowel cancer, although them's fighting words because it's not a pretty end, people of Earth, than endure any more systemic abuse from her or Metro South, specifically QE2 Hospital, which is so awful. I told her to cease calling me. She is no longer my doctor. I hung up. That's how angry I was with her. Now, what year was this? Just after this event, my patient file got disappeared from QE2. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? The cowardly dogs. Anyway, they didn't just throw out my patient records referring to my colonoscopies. They threw the entire QE2, including years and years of very bad dentistry, colonoscopies, my um, hysterectomy and bladder repair job with the TVT tape and the vaginal repair, those three things were done, the one surgery. But luckily there were three pages left of the um, surgical report, so I still had evidence of that surgery so that's why I'm still eligible for a little bit of compensation. But they tried to do that so that women like me couldn't get compensation. That's how low slung and evil and perverted and cowardly curs that hospital is. Never forget people of Earth. Never ever forget. They try to obliterate your records and then they try to obliterate you. Happened in Nazi Germany. Don't ever forget. I'm onto them. That's why I make all these videos very public for everyone and anyone to see and hear what was done to me. So it wasn't just done to me either. I had a letter from the Ethicon class action. 
they're still chasing records for 10,060 patients. They try to obliterate their rights. It's completely debauched and evil. Oh, and on top of it, Services Australia have made it difficult for them too. Changed a procedure that was never a problem before, made it very... Anything, anything they can possibly do to obliterate us and not pay what they owe us. As if, as if, you know, $4,000 is going to fix our long-term health issues or give back any quality of life, by the way. It's insulting. But still, I'll accept it graciously as a symbol of some form of their regrets or apology at least. Won't buy fucking shit. What does $4,000 buy me? Almost buys me a good quality rolling machine if I decided to spend it on that. I'm thinking about it. But they're about five or $6,000, so... It's not quite enough, but it's it's a good good down payment on one. Um, it buys me a little weekend home to see my childhood friend Lynn Robertson in New Zealand, which I think I will spend some of that money on a little trip home. I haven't been back to New Zealand since very early, very late and very early two thousand four two thousand five <coughs> when I went home for three weeks, and that was a well, anyway, we won't go there, but it's time I went back home and saw my friend one more time. Who knows, you know, we're getting older, we might not we might not see each other if I don't go soon. You know, she's healthy though, you know, but I'm never healthy, never. So time is of the essence to, to make things happen in my life while I still can get up and walk around and exist. Anyway, um, I continue, this up, so I finished with, I hung up on that former GP and told her she's no longer my doctor. By the God, she let me down very badly anyway, many, many times. So now I'm truly going it alone in our current medical apocalypse at great personal risk as I do have a proclivity to grow polyps which I am well aware are pre-cancer. But you know what causes cancer to start blooming? Stress and abusers. I will heal my own self as I'm doing with my lungs because of her negligence and incompetence. Absolutely. A homeless man, a homeless man told me to take mullein tea to heal my lungs. A homeless man in America was a better doctor than my actual general practitioner. To you, Jim Carrington. By the way, I hope you're not homeless anymore and life's been sweet to you because you're a wonderful human being reaching out to me the way you did and saving my life. You're one of my earth angels and God and Goddess bless you always. There's good people out in the planet Earth on the internet that have, have our backs, people. Very grateful and honoured by that, by the way. <clears throat> Can't rely on people with medical degrees to treat you properly. It's it's complete inversion and a perversion of our society. Completely evil and debauched it is. We're having to heal ourselves and be our own doctors and medical practitioners to a certain degree because you can't trust them with your body anymore. Literally can't trust them. It's terrifying. Terrifying. Utterly terrifying. <clears throat> Back in 2022, I was disinclined to go through any more colonoscopies for other reasons related to this. They get me in their system. They could easily fucking medazzle on me, people, with my bad lungs. It'd be so easy. And then they could just turn and say, 
I had lungs shut down with the anaesthetic because it's happened before. Happened on 25th of June 2019. Could easily snuff me out that way. So no, I will not comply. Unless I really, really am in fear of dying and even then I'd, I'd be taking a great risk because if I'm that close to death, them getting me in their fucking hospital would be just so easy to snuff me out. And I love my life. I've fought hard for it. I've come back from death many, many, many times since early childhood. It's why there's an old saying going around that I love and I've embraced. Never fuck with the Tanya. Now eventually we all we all die. Eventually my time will come, you know, sooner or later. It, it happens to all of us, but I'm not ceding my body over to so-called specialists and doctors who don't have my back and I'm not safe with. No, that will not be happening. <coughs> And you know what's really weird? Since I stopped having colonoscopies, well, my bowels can be a bit tickety-boo depending on what I've eaten and that, but they're not as bad as they used to be. Isn't that weird? All that interferences and invading your body autonomy constantly. They were wanting to do it every six months. I said, hell no, I won't go. Hell no. Oh, you're in danger, you're in danger. Well, I'm always in danger, aren't I? I'm a woman, alone, on planet Earth, with no family and no support. Of course I'm in fucking danger. And you want to add to that danger? Fuck off. Seriously. I'm livid when I think about it. Utterly livid. They, think they know that you're alone and vulnerable and that you're a milk cow for them. It's just... Um, and government has to pay all that money to them, of course. I, it doesn't come out of my own pocket because I don't have anything, but someone gets paid. Trust me on that one. We're just fucking... We're just cattle to them. Absolute cattle to be milked. Loosh fed on and drained of all our vitality and money and health. It's that evil. I have spoken. Mama T has spoken. <clears throat> anyway, I carry on reading. I know. It's a bit, I'm a bit intense today. I wonder why. Anyway, triggered by all these memories of that bloody doctor. Oh, she was a cow. In real terms. Treacherous. I will tell my body which keeps the score. That there will be no invasions of my inner spaces poking around in my lower intestines, causing me to feel dreadfully sick each time for months after. It used to take me two to three months to recover from each colonoscopy, and then they were wanting to do it every six months. So that would have left me with only three months of feeling okay, and then I'd be down that rabbit hole again. No, 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 not going there, guy friends and girlfriends. There's a lot to be said about the power of saying no and reclaiming your own health and your own body autonomy, by the way. Here I write, it's been 15 months since the last colonoscopy and I have still not recovered. So no, I refuse to allow them near my body ever, ever again. It's a choice I'm making to keep myself safe. Indeed. Why is that doing that flashing thing again? Rotten bloody machine. <sighs> My body has been invaded, medically tortured enough. The more I stand in my own authority and protect my mind, body and spirit, the more I heal. She tried fear-mongering me so they can keep their quotas and use my body as a practice ground. No, I am not your 
Dr. Mengele experiment by the gods I am not. It is enough what they did to me with the TVT tape in October 2007, 30th of October, to be specific, leaving me with permanent autoimmune problems, fatigue, weakness, illness, now chronic bladder problems again. So no, just no. I don't hate my own body enough to put it into any surgical hands ever again. It is too dangerous, especially as ever since the last debacle, I have served no, nobly and bravely as a kind of whistleblower on Facebook. We all know what happens to whistleblowers. Yes, we do, babies. A doctor who could not even give me a repeat for penicillin for my lungs is no doctor at all. In fact, is tantamount to a murderer, given my long history, 53 years long, of lung problems. She is a monstrosity and incompetent. I am done. By 53 years, I meant I had lung problems from the age of four. I was just trying to work it out there in my mind where I got that number from. But yes, it started when I was four, when I nearly died of whooping cough and measles. <coughs> so it's um, 55 years now, by the gods. It's a long time to survive with very bad chronic lung issues. 16th of September 2020. So, my daughter gave me a body pillow to support my spine. It sort of works. Mostly every time I walk past the bedroom, it freaks me out. It looks like someone is sleeping in my bed. I have mixed feelings about this. Manifesting as a bitch, winky face. It does, it looks like there's someone lying there, look, I'll show you, like, what the fuck? <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> I guess it's okay, because sometimes, you know, when I'm not feeling all that well, or feeling a bit vulnerable, I cuddle up to it. How sad is that, what I'm reduced to in this life, cuddling up to a fucking pillow, because I've never been able to draw in a healthy, loving constructive, supportive, nurturing, loyal, faithful, passionate, romantic, heartfelt relationship. Am I right? Oh, small smiling. Delete, 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 delete. I'll stick to the pillow. Delete, delete. The pillow won't cause me any problems. Delete. It's sort of getting a bit manky though. I probably should shout myself a new one, but you know, it's not so bad as what I'm saying. <laughs> oh dear, life is a pillow and a bird. 16th of September 2019. Ah, oh, here's a beautiful face. Here's the most gorgeous face. Here's a real doctor. A real doctor in a fur coat. Miss Penny Aarons. Yes, Penny, Charlie. We miss her, don't we, Charlie? Dear Goddess, how I miss her, Miss Penny, one of my greatest healers. She was indeed. She used to, because I have sleep apnea and I stopped breathing in my sleep, very often I'd wake up to her sitting on my chest, eyeballing me with a paw on my mouth like this. I'd, be, I'd wake up and I'd look up and there's these big green eyes staring at me going, trying to tell me to breathe oh bless she had a lot of stress worrying about mama t not breathing but anyway um <clears throat> and her other thing was she after the surgery because this was in 2019 i'd have Beauregard pressed up against my left side and penny against my right 
and she'd be purring and just giving off the healing hurts healing me they both healed me those animals in tandem devoted to me they were most gorgeous ones i miss them terribly what am i gonna do life's not the same without them it really isn't <sighs> I mean, we've got you, Charlie. She just said, what am I, Scotch mist? But, you know, she knows what I mean. She misses them too. I woke up happy and feeling infused suffused with a great and powerful love Ooh, it's intense to wake up like that babies i went through my memories just now and posted the more interesting ones i'm just incredibly amazed at how far i've come in the past nine years but even more magically since that suicide attempt four years ago I am so honoured and grateful to be alive. I am so blissed out with all the love I am receiving daily from my beautiful friends and remnant family and tribe and from the God spirits elementals also. I am feeling holy, holy and alive in the dreaming. I am free to be me in all Worlds, love, 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 winky face. Wow, how lovely is that? See, I'm not always a cranky, ornery, bitter old lady. Sometimes I can be gorgeous. Blessed be the Holy One who heals me and raises me up to my own unique becoming. Amen. My beautiful friend in Manchester, Louise Winton, wrote, What a marvellous person you are, Tanya. So privileged to know you. You've travelled a long, hard road and achieved and continue to achieve daily. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Oh, that meant a lot to me, actually. I always feel like I've achieved nothing on this planet. So, thank you, Louise. I wrote... I love you, Louise. Kiss. You've been a staunch supportive presence in my life since I met you online. Thank you for your immense gorgeousness. Smiley face. Kiss, kiss, kiss. She's just gorgeous. Very often she will ring me on Messenger to check on me all the way from Manchester to see how I'm going. Very lovely woman. So, there's, you know, as much as I bitch and complain about the bastardry that's gone on in the last four years, and often throughout my entire life too. There's some gorgeous souls and people out in this world. So never give up, people. Try not to wallow in despair too long. Focus on the good. There's so, so much good. There really is. <clears throat> Here I write, bear in mind I was waxing very um, philosophical because I was still recovering 2019 from that near death and still experiencing a fair bit of pain still and very much struggling to reintegrate into my physicality even though I pushed myself out to drumming circle at West End and to dancing I was still flailing really fucking flailing it was kind of a fight to stay to stay here in more ways than one babies so here i write and this is how it's done my two friends never yelled at me about my highways of dirty dishes making their way out the kitchen floor and down the hall all my unkempt hair all the fat i piled on from frenzied comfort comfort eating one cake a day habit for several weeks. That was truly insane. 
that was very, very bad. I bloomed out, ballooned out, I mean, to 103 kilos. And they sent me to a dietitian, and the dietitian says, I don't understand how you're only 103 kilos, given what you told me what you've been eating. He said, you should be 20 kilos over that as well. How are you staying, you know, reasonably within range? I said, I drink a lot of tea. He went, you yeah, know, that might be a contributing factor. He was astonished. I said, I dance. He said, you should be a lot fatter, Tanya. Well, that was inspiring because I always thought that I'd, you know, gone to hell in a handbasket. But anyway, the weight eventually did come off. Not all of it. I still sit around 90 kilos, which is still way, way too, too overweight. But, you know, the weight did come off naturally when I settled back down, got off all those fucking psych meds, people of Earth. They never wavered with my constant death idealisation or when I literally chased death like a two-bit ambulance chaser without the grubby amassed con artistry fortune. They loved me through more horror than the average person in Western society goes through. They loved me when I tore my hair and shredded new assholes too. They loved me when brutalised and wild-eyed I slapped on my makeup and tightened my corset and went right back out into the fray to dance and play again. All I could do after the utter devastation of my entire life. <sighs> my beautiful friends are still loving me even as I slowly heal myself and to reclaim my power and my Mustang Quay energy and ride my way through sunrise to sunset each and every day and night. They will love me when my death eventually catches up with me and decides to keep me. Perhaps some will love me again in the next incarnation. And the next, until the gods are finally satisfied with my accumulated spiritual wisdom and power. Or perhaps my dust and dashes will fertilise new ground and new minds and embolden new hearts long after the memory of me has faded. Depression is a motherfucking bitch though. But I think we are on reasonably friendly terms now. She doesn't stay as long or as dangerously as she used to. Just enough to remind me to be joyous and love myself, my life and my eminently true loves just enough. I wrote that in response to a piece of prose posted by the Phoenix Centre on the 11th of September 2019. It occurred to Pooh, and this is um, from um, the house at Pooh Corner or, or an A.A. Milne story anyway. It occurred to Pooh and Piglet that they hadn't heard from Eeyore for several days. So they put on their hats and coats and trotted across the hundred acre wood to Eeyore's house. Inside the house was Eeyore. Hello Eeyore, said Pooh. Hello Pooh, hello Piglet, said Eeyore in a glum sounding voice. We just thought we'd check on you, said Piglet, because we hadn't heard from you and so we wanted to know if you were okay. Eeyore was silent for a moment. Am I okay? he asked eventually. Well, I don't know, to be honest. Are any of us really okay? That's what I ask myself. All I can tell you, Pooh and Piglet, is that right now I feel really rather sad and alone and not much fun 
to be around at all. Which is why I haven't bothered you, because you wouldn't want to waste your time with someone who is sad and alone and not much fun to be around at all, would you now? Pooh looked and Piglet and Piglet looked at Pooh. I think that should, should read Pooh looked at Piglet and Piglet looked at Pooh. And they both sat down, one on either side of Eeyore in his stick house. Eeyore looked at them in surprise. What are you doing? We're sitting here with you, said Pooh, because we are your friends. And true friends don't care if someone is feeling sad or alone or not much fun to be around at all. True friends are there for you anyway. And so here we are. Oh, said Eeyore. Oh. And the three of them sat there in silence and while Pooh and Piglet said nothing at all, somehow, almost imperceptibly, Eeyore started to feel a very tiny little bit better because Pooh and Piglet were there, no more, no less. Author A. A. Milne and um, <clears throat> that's exactly what depression behaves like. Thinks that no one loves us and no one cares and we're all alone and we're boring and we're a burden and we're a pain in the ass and you know we can't we can't be around other humans because we'll bring them down and we'll somehow you know infest infect them with our sadness and it's all kind of an evil darkness and a fabrication of our own mind because if we simply allow our friends to be there with us we heal and we get better and we reclaim our lives and we reclaim our mind and uh, so uh, but you have to allow it and not be trapped in that hellscape and uh, a very dear friend of mine is trapped in that mental state now and our, our friendship is dissolved and it should not have it should not be that way but you know he rejects me constantly and there's nothing I can do but accept that choice to reject me and it's um it's the way it is, people of Earth. It's actually really fucking cruel and sadistic and evil and awful, but, you know, I'm done. I'm done being constantly rejected when I've done nothing wrong but loved. Platonic loves, platonic friends. Sometimes my platonic loves are even more valuable, more precious than any lover I could have had that all turned toxic ultimately and destructive, you know. So there is that. But anyway, I'll let him, I'll let him sort himself out, my, my beautiful friend, and time, time will reveal true hearts and minds as it always does, always. Just got to give people time. Somebody posted this me, which I found hilarious. And it's a, it's a photo of Lestat, who was a, a vampire in Louisiana. Louisiana? I think he was in Louisiana. And it's about vampires. <coughs> I'll show him here, indulging in some very nice grapes. And very nice luncheon and you're very elegant and uh, it's posted by Pagan Humour 
So apparently consuming blood is illegal in Louisiana. So someone replied, how much blood do people have to drink before it was banned? And uh, they posted this photo and then they wrote, God damn it, Lestat. <laughs> it's dark, but it's kind of true, isn't it? Who got the idea of banning drinking blood anyway? Vampires are meant to be fictional, by the way, but I call bullshit on that. I've had entire relationships with vampires. They didn't drain me of my actual blood. Well, they wouldn't have been able to get away with that, but they loose fed on me for fucking years. And I can name them to this day. Very destructive and damaging they were. One I had to, um, yeah, sick Papa Legba onto him to protect me from running into him at crossroads. Huge fucking energy vampire he was. And his little red-headed fucking cohort. Evil they were. But anyway, life goes on and it's beautiful. And I have people who... Don't drain me of my energy, but actually, symbiotically, we, in equilibrium, feed each other energy, which is what true friendships and or love affairs are meant to be like. Spiralling in equal measure, not one draining all the time, sucking and sucking and sucking until the other is literally in a fight between life and death. It's evil to do that to someone. I shared that meme again about when I was your age, I defeated the Nazis in Holland and the kid replies on Xbox or PlayStation. So I'm not sure why that got repeated twice, but anyway. 16th of September, 2018, 5.01 a.m. Don't ask. And I won't tell you. Okay, okay. I went dancing again. My beautiful Tisha and Moana brought me to the casino and back home safely. Thanks, ladies. Kiss. I must have, my car must have not been working at that point in time because that's unusual that that they they brought me and brought me there and took me home. I really was going home at two a.m. But Joe called out to me, and so I put my bag down, and he and I went berserk. Corey and Joe was very sweet on me, that man. He was a lovely man. He was a acupuncturist by profession. He and I went berserk. This is interesting how I mentioned about feeding energy to each other. He matched my energy, and I matched his, and it was a complete, you know, infinity loop. Like, it was just... And it would just build and build and build. And he'd get terribly excited, of course. Um, you know, I'm talking, <clears throat> I guess, kind of sexually. And I wasn't sexually excited, but I would be really excited too because we, we had good fun together. It was completely platonic, you know. I actually thought he had a partner, but it turns out he didn't. So he was really interested in me. And I kept blocking him because I thought he had a partner. So I was a bit confused by all of that. But anyway, it didn't happen between us sexually because I didn't go there. And, um, you know, because I'm always, even back in those days, saving myself for the, the magical one who never arrives in my life. Am I right? Well, maybe he did, but I blocked him because I thought he had a partner. <laughs> Story of my life. But anyway, it's actually quite tragic. That I, you know, even in those days I'd shut down my sexuality because I shut it down and after the, the evil with, with Dave, I shut it down in 2015. That's it. I'm done. I'm done being used and abused like that. So um, anyway, so Joe and I went berserk dancing wildly and we danced extremely wildly indeed. It was hilarious until 4am. 
Shani danced with me also in the last few hours of the night. Shani was um, a, a Thai transgender trans woman. She's wonderful. Oh, she was wonderful. I loved her. So I had both Joe and Shani tucked under each arm, dancing wildly and joyously, which would have looked quite strange because I'm a short, fat hobbit woman. And Shani was very tall and slim and elegant with massive big boobs, but very slim, very narrow hips because, you know, biologically she was born a man. So she had the narrow hips, but there's really amazingly huge freaking tits, am I right? <laughs> I used to joke she could take an eye out with her boobs. And um, it was funny as hell. And Joe was from Korea and very short and slim, like he wasn't fat. You know, like reasonably good physique, you know, but short like me. So you picture this, me with my blonde hair. Asian man under one arm, very tall Asian trans woman tucked under the other arm. Anyway, here we go. Let's continue this reading. This used to happen when I was on my fourth or fifth wind from dancing all night. So I'd be on this like, I call it adrenaline extremist. I'd be like fucking high, seriously. So anyway, there was a bit of initial confusion as Joe thought Shani was commandeering me as she was being protective. But once they both understood that I was happy to dance with both of them together, we went off. Oh my God. I was so exhausted yesterday that I did not think I could do a second night. And now look at me. Yes, that was astonishing astonishing people of earth i pushed through the pain barrier why is my hair doing weird things get, get over there behave yourself i swear to god it's almost like medusa like snakes are pulling out at me maybe they are maybe they're really snakes medusa can turn a man to stone with one look babies <coughs> won't be doing that we, i don't want my men turned to stone it's not the men in my life that counts. It's the life of my men, am I right? Said Mae West. Anyway, where was I? I pushed through the pain barrier, but wore flat sandals this time, and several winds of reprising my energy reserves after utter exhaustion. Joe at one point asked me if I was okay. I said, not really. I died two hours ago. Now you are just dancing with my ghost. But we laughed and kept dancing. Like, you know what? To be honest, if he thought I wasn't okay, if he really did genuinely love me, you know, he should have said, I think you should sit down and have a glass of water or lemonade and have a little rest, you know. But no, he'd keep me going. <laughs> Dancing it for more wilder, and the wilder it got, the more my adrenaline kicked in, and a fourth, a fifth, and I'd be off. I just constantly, constantly, and then I'd go home, and I'd think I'm going to die. I'm this is going to kill me. Kind of almost did kill me, really. I mean, I blew out my gallbladder, but I blew that that out with the HRT, and you know, to be fair, my rather bad diet as well was a contributing factor, but. By the gods, they used to drive me almost like a wildebeest in that casino. They were not really my friends. They were, <laughs> they, they did, but they used to love it, you know. And to be fair, I loved it too, like I did. I could have said, you're fucking killing me. Every now and then I would, like I told some woman a couple of years ago, you're killing me, and she made me dance five more songs. And finally I said... I love you, but I'm dead now. I have to go home. They wouldn't understand that I'm actually, my energy, when it's fully depleted, is gone. It can take days to build up again, you know. Like, I do have to be careful with my energy. Anyway, I continue writing. Karen spoiled me with drinks, which was kind of her. 
I got to see Joe and Sally, that's female Joe and Sally, and we all had a fantastic time. I even sat at the tables at the end of the night and had actual conversations with men that sat with me. Highly unusual, because I usually just dance, 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 dance. Pardon me, dance, dance until I drop, and it's partly um, a way of avoiding the men. So I actually sat and was nice to the men at the end of the night by actually talking to them as if, you know, they, they, they mattered and, you know, they might say something meaningfully meaningfully to me, but they didn't because at the end of the night they were pissed as newts and it's just drunk slather or blabber and you just I just sit there rolling my eyes and think, oh, why they even bother being nice, you know. But every now and then, every now and then, as happened in that instance, I would actually be nice to them. Probably because I had all that testosterone and energy from Corey and Joe and my transgender woman friend, although she probably didn't have that much testosterone, but she used to flirt with me a little bit as if she was still a man. It would kind of amp me up a little bit. It was very weird, very weird dynamic. But I guess I was amped up with all that attention all night. <clears throat> Shani came back to sit with me and introduced me to several people as her ma, ma, she'd say her Thai accent. I said, we look after each other at the casino and go completely wild. Then I go home to my dog, cats and birds, which is true. It's exactly what happened every weekend. I love my rare and precious casino tribe. Another wonderful night, free and ebullient and nurtured. Thank you, God, for showing me such beautiful light and joy in dark times. I will not be able to walk or move much today, but all very good. Healing my body, mind, spirit is a work in progress, but I'm witnessing my own magic happening. I danced so much that I went into a trance-like state. My body was writhing. My mind was expansive but hypervigilant. There were moments when my soul left me and I have no idea where she went. Still calling her home. But yes, it was quite wonderful. Joe and I do some powerful self-healing when we dance like that. Corinne, Joe with our energetic, almost like two warriors butting up against each other. And even the security guards would come out onto the floor and just watch him and I dancing. And they, their mouths, the, most of them were Maori or Pacific Islander. And they would just come out and their mouths would just be like, because they recognised that warrior type energy that was going on between us. It was deep love between us too. Like he could have been the one people, but I wasn't attracted to him. But there was a deep love between us. There was this deep kind of abutment of our energy where we were just butt up against. And look, to be honest, because he was a man, every now and then he kind of presses genitalia into me and just try and just flirt but kind of an inappropriate in a way but he'd press his tackle into me and I'd ah, go <laughs> pull back but then I'd dance even wilder and he would kind of laugh and laugh and he used to dance so vigorously he sweat he was bald he had a bald head which as I told you in other videos I don't find baldness attractive at all it's not his fault though he was a lovely man but he had a bald head, and because he's dancing wildly with me, he'd start sweating from the top of his head. The sweat would be pouring off him. I mean, I would have been sweating too, but it's less obvious because I have hair. And <laughs> I mean, my, my dress would be quite damp and wet, my corsets would be quite wet when I got home and be like, oh, the Jesus. But anyway, 
he'd be sweating in front of me and he'd be like looking like he's gonna have a fucking heart attack and i'd be like are you okay i'd say to him too are you okay John? yes yes i am okay and i'd get this like um napkin you know from the bar and i'd pat his head that was like real intimacy i'd really kind of treat him like he was a much treasured friend which he was in that sense oh but did we butt up against each other energetically and oh it was oh, i mean i kind of still have to laugh about it in a way but he was very sweet to me he'd always come up towards the end of the night because he was always gambling in the high rollers and he'd always come up and he'd just hand me a you know the stubby bottles of jack daniels because everyone in the casino knew i like to drink jack daniels so they'd just hand me these bottles right he'd just hand it to me and i and i oh thank you i'd say to him and then we'd just start dancing and off we'd go and then after a while he'd go and he just he would just hand me drinks and I'd say, no, no, I can't have any more because I have to drive home, you know. So, um, and then so towards the end of the night, if we were still dancing wildly, like we did that night, he would go up and come down and bring me a big tall glass of lemonade with uh, plenty of ice in it. And I was like, oh, I needed the sugar actually after sweating and giving out all my energy. I'd be like, oh, thank you so much, Joe. And look, he was very sweet and generous to me, he really was. I think he got a bit disappointed towards the end that I wouldn't go there with him sexually, you know, but I wasn't teasing him or anything like that. I made it clear. I said, no, you have a partner. And then one day he says, but I don't have a partner. I said, well, who's this woman that's always with you glaring at me like I'm, you know, that, that like I'm doing something wrong, you know? Oh, she's just a friend. She's just a friend. And I looked him straight in the eyes and I said, I think she's a bit more than a friend, Joe." I said, don't come the raw prawn with me. I know, when, I know what women are like when they're jealous. I said, you've got something going on with her. Don't bring me into your nightmare. I said, I'm a celibate asexual and I don't do polyamory and weird fucking, you know, threesomes and sordid fucking weird kinky shit he just like okay tanya i love you they always when i tell them off they were always like little kids i'd tell them off they'd be like okay tanya and that would always be like this but i love you i'd be like yeah i love you too but don't don't inculcate me into your nightmares like i'm a free woman and i intend to stay this way for a reason and i'm happy to dance with you and have a wonderful time but don't don't try and lure me into anything sordid. And they would, I really respect you, Tanya. And they did. They did respect me, actually. But, you know, it also meant, quite frankly, that I sabotaged myself in a way because I never found a loving partner. But, you know, to be fair, I couldn't trust a lot of them. Couldn't trust them. Wouldn't trust them as far as you threw them. That's the sad part about it. But, you know... Joe, I don't know what happened with Joe. Oh, that's right. COVID came along. When did I write this? This wonderful night I had with him. 2018. I think it was. Yes. So COVID came along and I think he went back to Korea. I think he did. I didn't see Shani anymore either. So I think she went back to Thailand. I hope they didn't die. You know, they made out everyone died, but I don't think they died. I think they just went home to their own countries and got on with life, you know. Shani used to live, I used to see her around West End sometimes, so I think she lived at West End. But uh, she, that was a very strange thing. One time, <clears throat> I think it was in 2020, during the early, you know, the, the, the first year of COVID, I was walking around West End and I saw her and I went up to her and said, oh, hi, Shani. She looked at me like she didn't know me. And I'm like, what? I fucking dance with you nearly every weekend and you act like you don't know me? And then this really deep man's voice, she went, do I know you? And I got such a shock. I mean, I knew, I knew she was, you know, transgender and therefore had a male voice. But at the casino, she always put on this squeaky, really little girly voice like this. And it was so cute. But I, you know... I just thought it was odd how she approached me that way. 
how I approached her, but how she um, spoke to me in her man's voice <laughs> at West End, dressed as a female, dressed as a woman. So yeah, anyway, she was a bit of an unusual character, very unusual. But anyway, <clears throat> so yes, Joe and I do some powerful self-healing when we dance like that. Actually, I think we were healing each other to a certain degree too. It was, very, it was very, very powerful. And um, as I said, he was a lovely man and just vanished one day. He just didn't come to the casino anymore. And I myself got mandated out for six months because I refused to participate in a certain bioweapon. So there was that. And um, yeah, um, yeah, it was odd. It was odd. I came back. Oh, where's Joe? Oh, we haven't seen him. No one knew where he was, so I presume he went home to Korea, not the other permanent home in the sky or wherever it is we go in the next dimension. I slept from 9pm until 6.30am this morning, then another snooze for an hour. I got a wheeze in my chest, but that is normal for me. I feel okay otherwise. If each day is a gift and we just have to unwrap it very, very carefully. Like the self sorry, like the reinnovated zombie mummies we are laughing my ass off. I was only awake from two PM till nine PM yesterday. Wrote myself off, lol, by the too much too much exercise. Two nights of very, very intense dancing. Like, literally nearly killed killed me. Literally. Without a word of a lie. So, um... <clears throat> I have a massive craving for chocolate. Probably post-dancing exhaustion. No chocolate in the house and I have to wait until Crystal brings back my car tomorrow. Wah! But think of all the calories I will avoid, lol. Lying on my couch with a very smoochy, codependent dog who missed me Friday and Saturday night. He keeps looking up at me and giving me hugs and smooches, which is when he covers my mouth with his cheek and tries to smother me. I had to push him off me as I literally, literally could not breathe. Passionate guy. Oh, Beauregard. I'd do anything to have you smother me again, Beauregard. He was a wonderful dog. He really was. Right, where are you going, Miss Charlie? You're coming to see Mama. 16th of September 2017. I had a two hour nap and even though I feel groggy, a bit dizzy and shite, I decided to take Beauregard and Charlie for a walk. It is so beautiful out here in the forest. I am glad I pulled myself together. We should do that later, Charlie. Go in the forest. Do us both a power of good. The tiny white lights in the photo are the quartz glistening. Looks all sparkly and pretty, like a fairy's put up lights for decorations. Oh, Mama T and her imagination and love of nature. You can't quite see it because of the flashing blue lights, but it didn't come across too great in the photo, but it was literally like little tiny sparkles shining out when the sun hit it. It's very pretty indeed. I used to sit on those rocks sometimes and meditate a bit, which was quite astonishing, the insights that used to come to me. Like Moshi Rabbeinu, I like that son, Moses, our father. 
I like to sit on one of these large rocks and peruse the promised land of Oz. I'm not hitting any rocks though. That did not work out so well for old Moses. Also, I don't believe in hitting things with sticks, lol. Here's the view of the lovely... The lovely rocks and the gardens around it. It's very pretty. This is up by the dam here at White's Hill Reserve. It's very pretty there. Oops. Right, here we go. Yes, Charlie. Must have been a hot day because I'm only wearing a little singlet t-shirt on, singlet top. But anyway, there's me with Charlie on my arm. There's another one of Charlie on her perch. And then there's Mr. Beauregard and Charlie. And what else have we got here? Charlie and Mama blowing kisses to the void. Mama actually receiving kisses from Charlie, which is cute and kind of unusual. We're up at the dam here, Beauregard sniffing something. Some other dog had probably peed there. Charlie on our outdoor table. <clears throat> I went out last night. I was touched. I miss what year is what year did I say it was? It must be two thousand seventeen. Was it? Can't remember. By the gods, yes, two thousand seventeen. I was touched by how loving, generous and protective my casino friends are. Some of the times they could be protective and nice. Every time a strange man came to dance with me, my casino pals appeared beside them, checking to see if I was okay. I told them I was. They really cock-blocked me quite severely, to be honest. But in, the, in those days, I didn't mind. I was still healing from the evil bullshit from Dave and I wasn't interested in having my time wasted by any more malfeasant, evil, dirty fucking arsehole men. Had quite enough of that, trust me on that one. So um, <clears throat> Antonio, who was very sweet on me, kept giving me drinks until I had to tell him no more as I had to drive. It was really lovely of him. It was very generous of him actually. I mean, they get their drinks for free in the high rollers, but still, you know, he could give them the drinks to anyone. He didn't have to, you know, give them to me. So I was always very grateful and appreciative of how beautifully they looked after me, at least with drinks. There was a weird vibe in the joint last night, but I could also have been a bit mood disordered as I had not managed to have a nap in the afternoon and my mind had been thrashing about like a commercial fishing net full of mackerel since 8am. Exhausting. So I was glad to be out in the world and be moving my body to help quell the impending sense of isolation and loneliness. 
purging old paperwork and reading through decades of abusive court cases, letters, emails has sent me to the brink, but it was good to be able to let go of some of it and keep some of it for another purge another time. But I seem unable to get rid of proof of why my life has been so utterly decimated just yet. And I eventually did purge it all in 2022 or 20? 2020. I finally burnt all the will dispute paperwork and oh, it was it was evil. It was so evil that I had trouble even letting go of it. Like I almost wanted to keep reminders of what I was put through and then I realised it's blocking me. It's blocking me from love, from joy, from success, from peace. I just had to just destroy it all and, you know, it was just so profoundly evil, that whole thing. I still haven't completely recovered from it, to be honest. Crystal messaged me and I was a tad upset. She gave me a conflicting story about her plans to return in December something about trying to get a return airfare. I give up. I just want her home, but she is really ambivalent. So in all honesty, I am in for a bumpy ride. Yes, I am. I wish I had had a stable family and a supportive partner, but I don't. I'm quite alone. So just for today, I sit in my garden accompanied by my non-human children and or friends <coughs> and let the sunshine sear away the old grief and brighten my visage. <coughs> and I posted that photo again of me brightening my visage with kissy faces with my beautiful little girl Charlie because you know thank God for people and, and non-humans that do love me am I right sixteenth of September two thousand and sixteen <clears throat> <clears throat> I don't know why I've suddenly got the urge to cough, but interesting timing that. Bit of somatization happening there. A wiser man would never dare piss me off. 2016 bejesus. The Tanya serves no man but God, and she, it, as in she, he, and or it, put me on earth for no good reason other than to rise and shine above the bullshit and reflect his and or her radiance in all the worlds. She lives by love and suffers accordingly, but she is no man's slave, meaning me. I'm talking about myself here in the third person. The figurative smiting is still in place. The Holy One has heard my prayers of old and honours me, even in my accursed existence and history of loving abusers and fools. She who survives to thrive will jive to the blessed beat of her own inner drum or die trying. Thanks for the healing. Thank you to Adonai, my one and only Lord. I am your creation and your gift to the lonely and lost. You cleanse me of the sin and filth and the obsolescence of the walking dead. You forgive me and those who willfully contaminated me, even as I refuse to forgive, for humans are fickle, fraught and feckless. Shabbat Shalom. Let there be peace and serenity in all the worlds, this world and the world to come. My world. 
I beg mercy and justice, my Lord, serenity, happiness, and most of all, love. My time has come. My time is now. It is all illusion. My naked, shattered spirit serves only to reflect a thousand facets of a life well lived and a life rebuilt. What was done to me cannot be undone. But I can fly in the face of my own sorrow, victimhood and rare and precious glory. For what is life but an ever swirling Fibonacci spiral? My fall has become my rise and soon I will fall again into oblivion. Well, clearly not that soon since here I am. Eight years later, still kicking on baby boys and baby girls. It's astonishing. Don't ask me how I do it. Soon, being relative to the mind of God, and who rather ironically would not let me die. Not enough fun or love, I suppose. I have some living yet to do, whether I like it or not. I suppose God for me is like poo and piglet when I give up and want to turn my toes up and start pushing out daisies. God sits down beside me literally on my bed and says, I'll get you through this one more time, baby girl. And so that energy does. Curious minds would like to know why, why I'm kept here. But I guess I'll find out one day what that was all about. Blessed be the Holy One who sends me into the night with sparkles and chutzpah and such little support. But this has been my work the past five years. To boldly go where angels fear to tread. To unfurl my broken wings and bear my broken heart and mind as an offering to the altar of grandiose delights. The desired one, the chosen, the hated and abhorred. Oh, what fun! And here she is. I was very hated at the casino. Although I, I spoke here quite lovingly about lovely people and friends that I had there, one of whom that I actually mentioned by name turned rancid in the end. I was well hated, well hated. So every weekend, my dance was part defiance and rebellion against the haters because no bastard ever, ever, ever has the right to grind me down especially after the awful, difficult life I had, even up to and including early childhood. So um, it's why I am the way I am today, completely uncompromising when there's haters and vicious people around. I give no ground to that at all. Simply won't allow it. Look how gorgeous I look, though. Look. Ah, here's those tights again. I really looked quite gorgeous. In my little housing commission bathroom, on my little disability, strutting my stuff. And here I am, all these years later, still doing it, babies. Just not at the casino anymore. And just really loving you know, how I'm treated at the Brooklyn Standard. It's just been gorgeous. Very much astonishingly gorgeous how I've been welcomed and included. So, yet again, for the thousandth time, to you all. A 
can see there I'm still wearing my um, engagement ring that I eventually sold for 150 lousy fucking dollars. Oh, that hurt. I shouldn't have done that. But I just didn't want to keep the energy of my ex-husband around me anymore. I'd worn that ring for, oh, I think at the time it was 33 years. I thought, enough is enough. One day I'll buy myself a spectacular bloody diamond ring as a rebellion and a defiance and a triumph, but it'll be mine and my own energy and bought with my own money and a measure of my own success, not trinkets thrown at me by false, feckless, evil men. Am I right? It's kind of debasing to have to live like that. Didn't want to live like that anymore. Wanted to be a self-determined, proud, free, autonomous, wild woman. And here I am, babies. <laughs> One day I might even find a measure of success and wealth as well. So. It is what it is. The world is small, six degrees of separation. This is still in 2016, by the way. I am made to confront my past. It is so painful. The karma train keeps derailing. Mind blown. Life goes on. Healing happens. So does magic. Love is the only law of the universe. Anyone who hurt me has never truly thrived. If they have, as the sharers have done, there will still be consequences. I pray I live to see them in my own day. If not, evil will be brought down by a greater good. The goodness of decent, kind people and the good that is God. Yes, every now and then I wax religious still. It's hard to shake off decades and decades and decades of belief systems and programming. I still believe in God, though, in my own weird way. <clears throat> I really need a hug right now, rattled and rolled. Closure coming in strange, extraordinary ways. Scary stuff but setting me free so I am no longer hampered or shackled by demonic entities of my former life. And from the comments section, I replied to, Thanks, Shana. One of the backhanded gifts of being an older person is standing by to witness unimagined recycling of old traumas being brought to you by the universe for contemplation, healing and or closure. Lessons will be repeated until they are learned. But this time, I don't own that lesson. <clears throat> it is brought to me like a cat with a dead mouse. I shall just observe. Some damage was too immense, spanning decades, for me to revisit. I choose not to. It costs me prosperity, safety, happiness, my reputation, success, and even love. For who can love a warrior with a never-ending source of pain and rage that even she had to stamp down inside her so she would not be consumed by her own fiery passions? So I lived as a zombie for 20 fucking long years. And so I allowed my enemies to rob me of my full light and potential. I was too damn sick at heart, mind and body to care anymore about anything or anyone. Then I woke up. The awakening brings forth love light 
and truth, self-awareness, global awareness and ascension into cosmic consciousness. A gnarly old tree of life that is struck by lightning on the hardened, scarred, dead wooden parts of my psyche. The odds? A million to one, but that old wood is ripped raw and exposed to the very core. The sap pouring out onto the ground like a libation to the gods of justice, truth and the way of the peaceful warrior. Let shit go. Stand up and be counted. Choose life. Laugh in the face of misery. Breathe. Face the hag, saggage in the baggage. Karma, a miracle, a mystery, a great turning on the Gilgulim. The Gilgulim are the wheels of time, the wheel of fortune in the tarot card. Constantly spinning into infinity, am I right? Why me, O oh God? Why always me? Because you are a very good witch. Winky face. Sixteenth of September, two thousand and fifteen, eight twenty six AM. I just woke up to discover my lawn mowing man sent me a text to tell me he has quit lawn mowing. He has mowed my lawns for four years. I am upset as he only charged me $40. Now I will struggle to get the lawns under control. Bugger, bugger, bugger. I texted him a week ago and he only replied now. So rude to not tell me previously because the grass keeps growing exponentially. So he really put me in the shit, you know. Nasty that was actually. Anyway, 2.22pm, just woke up feeling depressed and distressed about my lawnmower man quitting and not telling me until weeks later. So pissed off, thought we had a good rapport. Now I'll have to find another one and they will charge a lot more. So, fuck my life. Big storm coming, lots of hullabaloo in the sky. Big noise. So far, no rain. I resent these pregnant clouds who refuse to release on our arid land. Hopefully, this one delivers a good amount of water. My garden needs it. I need it. I have been feeling out of sorts all day. So rain is much appreciated. Thank you, Thor. Oh, sorry, thank you, God, and in brackets I wrote, Thor and Odin, the Norse gods of thunder and lightning and Donner und Blitzen, as they say in German. <clears throat> but yes, it's a beautiful day. I'm looking forward. I'm going to take, it's a bit windy out there. I can see by the trees. I'm going to take Charlie out when I finish this video and I'm going to sit on the ground and do some grounding and maybe attempt to meditate again. I'm not very good at meditation. I do trance drummings where I kind of, you know, channel information while I'm distracted with listening to the beat of the drum. But it's always about my love life and it's always such fairy stories that even I have to laugh. So... I can't really call it actual channeling because I know it's not real, you know. Mama T needs reality and stability and safety and sweetness and kindness and 
some kind of fucking commitment. Otherwise, I'd just spin on a dime because of my trauma issues and the abuse dynamics from the past. I'm very, very powerful as a woman, but I'm also equally, in equal measure, very, sh sh not, not shallow, that's not the word, very fragile and brittle. And it is what it is. It's, it's the damage that was done to me since early childhood. So I have to rise above it and um, just, I keep the notes. I thought about burning them all the other day because I can see it's all a load of bollocks. But this week, I might turn them into a fairy story one day. Turn shit to spiritual gold, am I right? This sweet, this sweet little meanderings. Every now and then there'll be little elements that do come true though and I think, oh, and I get my hopes up and then I realise I'm just being played by some, some trickster god or some entity out in the cosmos, maybe Cthulhu himself, someone that just uses my love life to get to me because they know that that's my most um, rawest, deepest, most fragile, brittle thing that can wound me the most. It's the only way people can get to me is via killing my pets or taking away love from me or turning my children against me as was done in the past or um, <clears throat> having my friends reject and abandon me. That's, that's, that's how they hurt me. That's the only way they can hurt me. You can't hurt me with anything else. I've survived too much, but they know that that's the last kind of very raw, sensitive nerve ending. Anyway, one day, even that won't hurt me anymore. I'll just be hard-boiled and bitter, and I'll be like, yeah, all right, well, just fuck the hell off. You know, sometimes I do do that, but it's it's not completely um, authentic because inside I still sometimes burn and agonise and hurt even though I don't show it always. So um, <clears throat> it's also part of the problem of being a highly sensitive person. Is um, It's hard. It's hard to hide my emotions sometimes and shuck off the enemies. It's... I'm getting better at it as I age, but it was, it, it's been almost a fucking art form learning how to do that. And you know what? You should never have to do that. You should only ever be surrounded by people who genuinely love you and are authentic with you. Because I try to be authentic with the people I love. Maybe that's what I'm doing wrong, though. Maybe I should just be a complete fucking insensate, cold, cruel, sadistic asshole, and then I might have been wealthy and had a loving partner. <laughs> it seems to work out for other people. But you know what? I wasn't put on this earth to, to, be, to become cold and empty and shallow and cruel, and I, I choose not to be that way. I mean, I can have a very sharp wit and a very sharp, irascible tongue if you really want to start a fight with me, but it's not its not who I choose to be. I'd rather be a loving, kind person surrounded by people who are equally loving and kind than go through life being some kind of arsehole. It's just it's, it's my path. It's, it's what I'm here for. But, you know, don't cross me or be vicious to me because I can be equally vicious back. I give as good as I get. But I, I don't want to live in that consciousness. That's not what I want for a loving partnership or a family, you know, dynamic. It's, it, it's, I'd rather stay alone as I am, cruising, cruising through life quite happily and contentedly in peace. We all deserve that, that measure of peace. Anyway, continuing with my reading, I shared a, a, a meme or a quote. It's actually a quote from Aldous Huxley, who wrote Brave New World. 
there will be in the next generation or so a pharmacological method of making people love their servitude and producing dictatorship without tears, so to speak, producing a kind of painless concentration camp for entire societies. So that people will in fact have their liberties taken away from them, but will rather enjoy it. Because they will be distracted from any desire to rebel by propaganda or brainwashing, or brainwashing enhanced by pharmacological methods. And this seems to be the final revolution. How fucking prescient was he? I don't know what year he wrote that, but it's completely fucking accurate, isn't it, given what we know about our world now. I posted that in 2015. Astonishing. Astonishingly prescient, that. <clears throat> it gives you chills. Like. So, there you go. Aldous Huxley. And if, if that's a photo of what he looked like, he's actually a very handsome looking man too. Brilliant and handsome. How I like my man. Well, he's not mine. It's not my man. Mama T doesn't have a man of it to call her own, but you know what I mean. Update. <coughs> 16th of September, 2023. And here we are. Astounding indeed. Then I shared a meme. Be a reflection of what you'd like to see in others. If you want love, give love. If you want honesty, give honesty. If you want respect, give respect. You get in return what you give. Mm, not always. Not always, says she who's done all of those things and sometimes only received abuse and dis debasement and treachery and evil in return. But uh, it is what it is. <clears throat> Here I write, not always, not as much as I give, which saddens me, the sickness of our times. I do appreciate being treated the way I treat others. Only very few have that level of integrity and honour to know them. To my beloved ones who do exemplify those values and those behaviours. Your rare and your precious gifts to our world. And I appreciate you when I meet or stumble across you or those of you who've been long time friends. I appreciate your gifts. It's beautiful and it's powerful and it's much, much needed in our world. 16th of September 2014. Miss Penny is worried about me. She is overly affectionate and keeps licking my hands. She must be upset by next door's fire. Sweet girl. I have just, so earlier I wrote, <clears throat> I have just been woken by fire engines. I looked blearily out my window to find them stopped outside my front door. I grabbed a dressing gown and ran to the back door to unlock it. In my kitchen window I saw Timsa, my neighbour's back deck and rear of house in blazing flames. Then two explosions. Fuck. I struggled to unlock in shock and ran out front to see if the children were safe. Timsa said they were all at school. The firemen did a great job. I'm a little in shock that I almost slept through the entire thing and didn't smell the smoke, and the fire could easily have spread to my place. I'm lucky I wasn't affected. Timsa owns his home, so hopefully they are insured. But what a shock. They were very lucky. 
Our houses are built out of asbestos, so only her deck burnt down and didn't jump the eaves into the kitchen at the rear of the house. I just went over there to offer them the use of my kitchen, but theirs is fine. They have to move into a hotel for three days while assessors check out the asbestos. It was an ambulance driver on Cavendish Road that saw the smoke and raised the alarm. Very lucky that it didn't spread to the rest of their house or to mine. There was hardly any smoke. My smoke alarm in my kitchen didn't even go off, which is odd. The Ambo freaked about their big gas bottle potentially exploding, but luckily it was over the other side of the house instead of where it usually is out on the deck. The smoke must have only become noticeable towards the end, as even now there is hardly any smell. It started in the auto bin, melted completely. I almost slept through the entire thing. I came home from Crystal's place and watched TV, then got stuck into my suitcase again. It is slowly taking shape, soothing to the nerves, keeping my hands busy and trying not to think of David and all the other Davids who shaped my life by deceit, betrayals and heartbreak. I decided while gluing on pictures, having a quiet epiphany, that perhaps this last David was the final torment, the final disappointment, the final lesson, and would usher in a new paradigm um, of me, hopefully, no longer loving men who have no real feelings for me and just play me like a cat and a mouse and who don't realise that this is an old pattern in my life and I'm well aware of the game and the salient fact that if they play me, no one wins. Not them, not me. The love just slowly dies like a dead rat and the grief eventually wears itself out. But that amazing, intense joy and beauty dies with it. They can't kill me. God knows they've tried. And love will bud again. I will keep my heart precious and preserve it for my animals. They don't fake who they are or how they love. I will spend more time in the garden and get back into harmony. And I will enjoy the spring and summer in my 49th cycle. Powerful endings will only usher in new beginnings. I wish I had enough money right now to buy that macaw and the Pomeranian puppy. I might as well fill my life up with pets since they appreciate me. The life force is strong in me and the desire to be loved almost all-consuming. At least I got a cuddle with Suki La 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 tonight. That was um, my daughter's female rabbit. I hope my beautiful daughter is better tomorrow. She had ghost pains where her gallbladder used to be. I stayed until midnight in case she needed to be rushed to the hospital. I hope it is not going to be anything serious. She is the only family I have left and my most beloved one. Time to sleep now at 3.38 a.m. in case she needs me tomorrow. 16th of September, 2013. I danced all night, came home at 4am, slept till about 4pm, then had a nice surprise, Crystal returning my car, took Jared and I 
to jackpot noodles in West End. Yummy. Then we went back to her place, played with Ramon Rabbit and played ukulele and harmonica while I sang along merrily but tunelessly. Ramon wanted to pull his ears off and Jared and Crystal were equally accommodating. Eventually, <laughs> oh, you have to laugh. Eventually, I sang Bob Dylan's song, Blowing in the Wind, since everything I sing, everything I try to sing, sounds Dylan-esque anyway. I really enjoyed Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, sung by K.D. Lang. She is awesome, and I wish I could sing even slightly as good as her. Ha, ha, ha. I got home around 2 a.m., still up watching old movies on television. I fell asleep at Crystal's for a while when I wasn't killing cats and rabbits with my voice, so not the least bit tired. I had a really good dance session at the pub on Saturday night. Burst front man, Woody Woodman, to you Woody, thanked me for supporting him even though I had had a very bad experience at Irish Murphy's in June. Indeed, very, very bad indeed. I was really pleased that he appreciated me cavorting in front of the band and helping keep the energy high. 16th of September 2011. <clears throat> I had an amazingly long schluff today. That means sleep. Now up and ready to party. Shabbat shalom, you all. And I hope to see you in shul, that means temple, tomorrow morning for some celebration and some davening for my favourite people who have striven so hard to see this day come to fruition. A shehechianu for you all, muzzle tov. I wonder what that what day I'm talking, I'm referencing there. Must have been some special event. My auntie Sylvia Shine wrote, Hi Tanya, thinking of you, hope all is well and your dreams come true. Got a bit of infection, Doc says must watch out. Don't think I could go through all that again. But I must say, all in all, I made an amazing recovery. Can't believe I am still here. We are all good here. Adrian was here last weekend, so it was busy. I don't write much, but we'll catch up. But we'll soon catch up. Wonderful news with Crystal. A hearty muzzle tof. Love and kisses. Sylvia, eight kisses. I'm glad I preserved her little notes. I love her. I love her. She's a wonderful woman. She died in 2014, so much, much and greatly missed by me. Hi, Sylvia. You guard your health, darling, and I'm so glad you bounced back so fast also. I can see a light at the end of the tunnel with my will dispute. Sharers were ordered by court to pay $6,500 for their slanderous incompetence. I don't know if they ever paid that, actually, to be honest. I think it was all bullshit. They have another month to put forward a proper defence. I think she is so pig-headed that she doesn't understand how much free advice the judge actually gave her before he made his decision. So I think she will continue to make serious mistakes until the court gets sick of her rubbish. This would be great for me, but if she has half a brain, she'll get a lawyer this time. It has all been extremely <clears throat> ugly and distressing. And <clears throat> it was part of her strategy to run up all my legal costs and leave me with nothing. The evil bastard. I hope she rots in hell to this day, by the way. This would um, this has all been extremely ugly and distressing. So a friend of mine who lives in the Blue Mountains has paid paid my friend Margaret paid for me, my beautiful Margaret. 
paid for me and my dog to fly down to Sydney in mid-November to spend some time with her. I'm so excited as this will be my only holiday in years. It's my last holiday actually, to be honest. <clears throat> anyway, never mind. I really have a sense that my life is finally going to do a turnaround for the better and I am so loved and blessed by my friends and Hashem, meaning God. I've been so distraught through so much of the past few years and throughout my life that I'm surprised I am still alive, but for some time now I've been experiencing several days of happiness in between all the depression, so I finally know I can allow myself to be happy and to make peace with my life. Still a long way to go, but I am so happy and proud of myself and my girls. Love to you, Sylvia. Three kisses. Sylvia wrote back, muzzle, which means luck and loads of it, glad it's taking the right turn. Please God, it should soon be a bad dream. Sylvia, eight kisses. I'm stingier with my kisses when I write kisses down. I don't know why I'm like that, because in real life, I'm very generous with my kisses with my friends. Anyway, it's sweet, isn't it? <clears throat> or as she would say in her Cockney accent, it's sweet, in it? Oh, I miss her. Oh, I miss She was such a wild woman like me, but a wonderful woman. Absolutely wonderful. 16th of September, 2010. I collapsed into oblivion from 2am until 1pm today. That's a long fucking sleep. 13... 13 hours or 12? I can't. Yeah, 13. 11 hours. 11 hours. <clears throat> I got up, then went to the shops with Jared, then came home, now brewing a nasty headache, probably dehydrated from sleeping so long. This is what happens when I overdo it trying to actually work around the house. One good day, Three days, sick as a dog, lol. The joys of being the dormouse in the teapot at the Mad Hatter's tea party. Tea, anyone? Mmm, now that's got me started. Major sweet craving. I'll have to bake a cake or make poffitures as I can't afford to buy lollies until Tuesday. This is the benchmark of poverty at my house, lol. When I can't afford my lollies or chocolate, oh my. My friend Karen Reviews wrote, Given the choice, I'd eat a homemade cake any day over store-bought lollies. She's right, and there's probably a bit more nutrients in a homemade cake than there is in store-bought lollies. <clears throat> 16th of September, 2008. Is delighted that Crystal is coming down from Toowoomba tonight. Yay! And thus concludes today's writings of even date. Nearly fucking three hours, two hours and 43 minutes. A long video again, my darlings. I meandered, I mused, <clears throat> I reiterated, I flowed, I pedaled backwards, I surfed forwards, I landed in a heap on the desert sands of time and space and memory. And then I carried on rather intrepidly, and here we are. Goddess bless you all, my beautiful friends who sit and watch my entire videos, which is astonishing. I hope you gleaned something out of that. And um, as always, shalom. Peace, salam, have a beautiful day, wherever you are on planet Earth or wherever the interdimensional entities collect our radio and waves and video waves. 
<clears throat> whatever wave function we're presenting out into the ether, into the other dimensions and across time and space. Um, I hope you um, enjoyed to sharing those memories of mine today. And um, yes, um, be happy, live your best life. And as always, never ever let the bastards grind you, me, us down. Bye for now. I'll be back tomorrow with my usual readings, which uh, conclude. I think the last one will be the 4th of October since I started this on the 5th of October last year. So we will have completed the entire year of journal entries and um, <clears throat> then I will have to think up new stories to create for you to keep us all um, bemused and entertained and have us all laugh and cry and whatever life brings to me in the very near future. Hopefully more laughter than tears and more bliss than distress and more joy than oi and a wonderful, magical gorgeousness for many, many years to come. So let us together manifest that in oneness and in unity under the eye of creator, all that is, was and ever shall be. Blessed be. Bye for now.